Hey everyone, it's Kane. I just wanted to let you know this is an older backup episode, so things will sound a little different. I apologize for the switch up, and I hope to have everything back to normal for you next week with Halloween Town. Thank you and enjoy. Welcome back to Not Another Needless Sequel, where we talk movies and propose unnecessary prequels, sequels, reboots, and remakes. My name is Kane. This is my wife, who's going to start us off with the story of 2011's Real Steel. All right, so check it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You didn't introduce me, and I was gonna say, "Hit a Fergie." And I then you kind of introduce I mean, you. Yeah, but yeah, it oh wasn't the right God. time. <laughs> Anyways, so this guy Charlie is a retired boxer because people like the entertainment and the thought of robots fighting because they could like get destroyed. And so just regular boxing kind of went by the wayside and his baby mama dies somehow and you learn that he has a son that he abandoned and he's fully aware about he sells the custody rights to the uncle because he needs money for a new fighter and then he keeps him for the summer and they find a robot and they make a relationship and fight with their old robot yeah this movie was always told to me that it was a rock'em sock'em robots movie like the game. Oh. And didn't get that. The first time I watched it, I was like, this ain't no fucking rock and song. No, robots absolutely not. But anyway, the movie starts off with Hugh Jackman. He plays Charlie Kenton. Huge also, jacked man. Huge jacked man. That reminds me, though. I mean, this movie is filled with people that were in the MCU or a Marvel movie in general. I we can't have... wait to hear all the trivia. <laughs> we have Hugh Jackman, <laughs> who is. <laughs> Of course, Wolverine still. Uh, Evangeline Lilly, who was uh, the Wasp. She still is. Yeah, she she's still die. she's still the Wasp. Spoiler alert! If you didn't see Ant Man, three was it Ant Man three? Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler alert! She doesn't die. Um, Anthony Mackie, you know he's uh, Falcon and now Captain America. Uh huh. He's also Clarence. Yeah. If anybody has not seen Eight Mile, his name is Clarence. Uh, Kevin Durant. He was in the Wolverine movie as the Blob, and Hope Davis plays Tony Stark's mother in Civil War. But, I mean, you know, I kind of got off on a tangent there, but I mentioned it to you that while we were watching this, there was so many people in this movie that were in the MCU. Yeah. And, I mean, hell, half these people were in Endgame, along with Tom Holland, who was Spider-Man in Endgame. And did you know that Tom Holland played Spider-Man in Spider-Man Homecoming? No, oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah. And in Spider-Man Homecoming, there was actually also an appearance from Donald Glover oh, where he played uh-huh. uh, Aaron Davis, the uncle to Miles Morales. Mm. And Donald Glover, of course, is known for many things, including his TV show Lando Community. Parisian? Yes, also oh, that. Oh, okay, okay. But that TV show Community he did, uh, it featured Donald Glover wearing Spider-Man pajamas. Oh, okay. And the, actually, that picture of him in the Spider-Man pajamas, comic book writer <laughs> Brian Michael Bendis describe that as the reason for or a big inspiration for miles morales what year was Mom, miles morales come come out excuse me i'm not done oh what you might not know is this little spoiler <laughs> donald glover actually appeared as the live action version of miles morales or miles morales's uncle aaron davis in spider-man across the spider-verse Oh. He also voiced Miles Morales in Disney's Ultimate Spider-Man 2012. Wow. So, you know, Donald Glover has a huge attachment to Miles Morales. But not Childish Gambino? No, that's a different guy. Ah. Uh, <laughs> not that other guy. <clears throat> so the movie starts off with Charlie Kenton, played by Hugh Jackman. You see, he is just... A loser. He wakes up with the classic drunk guy. He's rolling out of bed. Bottles are being knocked around. He hears his phone. He's like, bleh, bleh. and uh, he has a gambling problem. You see, he's just constantly like, I'll make that bet. Yeah, he's terrible. I also like, I think part of the reason this movie was hard, I don't like robot fighting. It makes me sad. Does it? <laughs> well, we'll get to the scene, but when he's at the fair, uh, his robot ambush is fighting the bull and yeah. he makes that bet. And like, I don't like animal death in movies. And so I particularly hated that scene. And I know the animal doesn't die, but especially when he gets the robot Adam later, he has eyes and like, he can understand and it's just sad. Yeah. So he does have a robot named ambush that he takes around the country, presumably, and just makes these little bets to do these fights. He gets paid for fights. And he's literally in tens of thousands of dollars of debt to bookies. Yeah, he gets like a call during this scene and somebody's like yelling at him about money and he says the wrong name. So it just shows that he's 
in debt to several people. And then this guy that's running this little show that he's currently at also makes him a bet that you know, the bull's gonna win, the bull does win, and he is trying to get the fuck out of there, and two dudes come up to him, he fucking just hits them in the face, he thinks they're trying to collect money, but they are delivering the news to him that his baby mama died. Yeah. And he needs to do something about the rights that he now has to his son, Max. And, of course, so he showed up in court, and he could tell that the aunt, or, you know, the baby mama's sister wanted Max severely and he could tell that they were very rich so he guilted the aunt's husband into paying him a hundred thousand dollars to babysit Max for the summer while giving them full custody. Yeah super fucked up on both Charlie and Marvin the husband's part because Marvin's like well I just want to enjoy this vacation I don't want no fucking kid here. Yeah. And Charlie's just like I don't give a fuck about this I'll totally sell off my rights to this kid. What I thought was funny is is what they did differently when they brought Max to him Mm -hmm. and Max saw Marvin hand him the first half of the money so the 50k and Max was like did you just sell me and he was like yeah and he goes well the half of that's mine but (laughs) normally you know the kid the part at the end or like the the point of climax when they fight would be him finding out so i thought that was unique i did write that as well i wrote that i really appreciate that they just got that plot point out of the way they didn't wait till the end to when they formed a bond then have him be like you sold me and then he's like no, Max, uh, I didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I they just got rid that. of that. They're like, yeah, no, he knows, and he's pissed, and he wants half the money. I mean, yeah, he's like, my dad doesn't want me. He's never been in my life. I'm, yeah. like, probably, what, 12 years old? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't need him. So I appreciated his sarcasm. Yeah, and the money that he gets for taking care of Max, he uses to purchase a robot called Noisy Boy. It was a Japanese model fighter. He's super excited about that because, you know, Ambush, his last robot, got destroyed. Noisy Boy was like a world champion fighter at one point. Which I did want to say, like, I thought the robots in this movie, even being that this movie is a little bit older now, it's from 2011, the robots all looked, I think, a lot better than I would have expected. And Did they look better than Transformers? Well, the thing about Transformers is it definitely looks like CGI, but there's something about seeing them transform that I'm just so, like, every time I see it on screen, I'm like, this is amazing. This is Shadow so good. Shadow of the day. <laughs> you remember listening to that? Yes. Over and over. I listened to that over and over without Transformers help. I know, that's true. So each of the robots were built both in real life and CGI, and that always makes the CGI look better when you have a real life model that you can compare and like build off of when you're doing CGI. At mm-hmm. least that's what it seems like for movies I've seen. So for certain shots, you know, they had animatronics, and then um, it says that they were controlled by more than 20 puppeteers. And Sean Levy, the director, opted to have more practical effects and puppeteering of the robots at the advice of Steven Spielberg, which I thought was interesting because we did that movie AI and we mentioned how good the robots looked in that and that was Steven Spielberg and it was the same shit where they didn't just use CGI, they Mm. did puppets and shit and practical effects and all that looks so good and like it looked good in this movie too. I agree, yeah, it did look good. That's interesting though, I didn't know that. So the robot Noisy Boy is like operating in Japanese and Max is like, I can like help like i know japanese and he says he learned it from a video game it's just a quick note but i put like what fucking video game taught this kid japanese mario i'm sure (laughs) i honestly i'm gonna mention this note because i have it but it's been a little while since we watched the movie at the time of this recording a week yeah and so i don't remember why i wrote this so i apologize about that but i wrote i'm 14 and this is deep ass dialogue (laughs) like just oh. something that they he said says, i was just he like he says something after no because like surprise surprise noisy boy loses like yeah. and he not only loses like he's in the junkyard oh yeah he gets completely trashed to, or yeah not in the junkyard they go to the junkyard after to try and find parts to, yeah. to fix him and i don't know why you would have written that I don't, i'm trying to think about I'm it i'm sure it was something max said about noisy boy getting destroyed because You know, Max shows through this movie that he kind of cares for the robots a little more than Charlie, who pretty much just sees this as his next bet. But yes, Noisy Boy... uh, Well, he especially cares for Adam, but that's because he thinks... Well, he doesn't think. Like, he knows... Like, Adam technically saved his life. Yeah, so at the junkyard, he slips, it's raining, and he, like, 
goes the off cliff, the cliff. The cliff falls. It's like, he's like, there's the cliff. And he's like, oh, thanks. And then it just collapses, like yeah. mudslide down. And his shirt gets caught on the hand of Adam, who's just sticking out of, like, the dirt. And so once he gets out of that predicament, he wants to get Adam out of the dirt. Charlie doesn't want to help him. And he makes... What uh, doesn't make sense is Charlie seems so concerned that he was going to die sprinted down there, got mm-hmm. him, lifted him up, and then was like, I'm not going to help you get this robot out. Well, also, he said, like, we're here for parts. Like, you don't even know what this is. This could be the parts that you need, mm-hmm. you know? But he makes fucking... He said it was a full robot. Mm-hmm. And also, how did Charlie lift a full robot up that steep-ass ladder, up all of those stairs, <laughs> onto a wagon, when he had to dig it out on the edge of a cliff yeah. while it was raining? I know. I don't know. Absolutely unrealistic. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they get the robot and they bring it back and Max is like trying to take care. Like this is his robot. You know, he put in the work. He's trying to clean it and shit. Meanwhile, Charlie tries to get a loan from Finn, Anthony Mackie's character. Clarence. uh Uh-huh. And uh, he says to him, like, you're a bad bet, brother. And like that shit hits Charlie hard. Because he knows this is true. It does, but why is he always asking people for money and then seeming surprised when somebody actually says no? Yeah. I mean, that guy knows him. He just definitely has a problem. I did want to say, while Max is working on Adam for the first time, it actually happens a few times throughout the movie. We called it out. Like, he's drinking Dr. Pepper all the time. Yeah. And he's like, all the cans are facing forward. And so I said it during the movie. I was like, this fucking product placement That's what we should have done is got a can of Dr. Pepper to just crack open and go so the pod could hear it. You know, they would be able to tell, ah, that's a Dr. Pepper. That's a Dr. Pepper. Pepper. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's actually not product placement. They mention on a DVD commentary that the production only received permission to use Dr. Pepper without payment. Like, they didn't have to pay... Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper didn't pay them, you know, to use it. They just wanted something that was recognizable, that would have a lot of caffeine. They could be like, yeah, you know, Max is drinking Well, that caffeine. many cans. I think on average, a can of pop has like 50 milligrams of caffeine, which is about half a cup of coffee. Mm. But he had like eight cans. And I believe that the Max recommended dose is 400 milligrams a day. And that's for an adult. A non-pregnant adult, might I add. Not that he can be pregnant, but what I'm saying is, like, he's a child. Yeah, it was a lot for him to be drinking. He does get Adam up and running, and he wants a fight. Charlie's like, fuck you. I don't care about that. But then Charlie tries to kind of be an asshole and is like, okay, we're going to go to this place called the zoo. And Mm -hmm. it's just, like, a local kind of, like, street boxing shit. Because in this movie, it's... 2020 which is the future yeah at the time and they didn't have zoos anymore so they were fighting in the zoo exhibits yeah i actually thought that was a really cool set piece like i like the idea behind that that in the future zoos are abandoned like everybody just wants to see robots because you would almost think if we had robots that sophisticated fighting we could probably have some pretty cool animal robots and we wouldn't need to do what zoos do i know some zoos do take care of their animals but you know what i'm saying yeah um so i liked that idea i have a love-hate relationship with zoos because you know i like cry whenever i see the animals but it's so terrible i know so i liked the disney world zoo yeah that was like open safari I liked that, too. I like driving through. Mm -hmm. So at the zoo, uh, fucking Max is, like, starting to bet, like, his father. Like, he's shit-talking this kingpin guy at the zoo. He's just like, no, not double it. I think that's just to show how similar they were, like, in personality. Like, how he got some of his father's traits. Like, but I agree. He's definitely a cocky little asshole. Well, I could see that. But I thought it was more that he had so much belief in Adam. Like, he was that much, like, I think it's worth mentioning, which, like, you can watch the movie. But Adam is a special, unique robot because he has shadow function, which not a lot of robots... Bailey, his late Charlie's lady, mentioned it was very, very rare. Yeah, and the shadow function is like it copies what it sees. Mm -hmm. And also they mentioned that Adam's a smaller robot. He was like a lesser version. A sparring robot. Yeah, he was there for the other robots to beat up, to take a hit, not to necessarily do damage. But he goes there, he wins this, and Charlie kind of starts to see the worth in Adam. And then we get like a montage where, you know, you see his rise to fame. He's fighting all these fights. You see a lot of other robots during that. I like seeing those other robots, like the themed robots. There's like a cowboy one. There's all kinds of crazy shit. I did write down a question uh, during this because 
it happens a couple times in the movie where you hear Eminem music playing. And granted, uh, the zoo, I believe, it was either the zoo or maybe it was where the final fight happens. They did it in Detroit, but... Stop. I wrote this... Sa- I swear to you, I have the same thing written. Finish your question. I'll tell you if they're the same. Well, mine was just, how much was the fucking budget of this movie that went towards oh. Eminem music? Like, how much money did Eminem make off of this movie is what I want to know. My question was, do you think that they made the fight in Detroit because Eminem demanded it in his contract no. in order to use all of his music? <laughs> or did Anthony Mackie recommend Eminem music for this film? Because Clarence got dunked on. I don't know if if it was anything like that. I know that they said, the director said, like, when they saw this location, they scouted in Detroit. Like, he, they scouted several locations, and he was like, nothing's better than this one. Like, I want to yeah. use this. It looks what I'm trying to go for. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he has his rise to fame, and then they are approached by, like, the World Robot Wrestling League, whatever, or not wrestling, S- boxing. Boxing, yeah, something. And, uh, like, these professionals, um, this lady... Farah, she, like, wants to buy Adam. They are like, no. Well, Charlie's like, absolutely. He's yours. Yeah. So terrible. Like, all he cares about is money and is willing to just give up Adam and Charlie Yeah, for more. Yeah, he doesn't care at all, and it shows, like, not much has changed. My thing was, though, she offered them $200,000. That's fucking chump change for the movie, or the amount of money he was making or would be making that what an insulting offer i know it is an insulting (laughs) offer and she offered because zeus needed somebody to spar with yeah and charlie's like done like think motherfucker this ain't worth it first off it's not even his robot that's true it's max's robot um but anyways they decide to fight the i don't know one of the the two headed dude. Yeah, the Twin Cities, I believe Twin his Cities, name is called. And he wins, and then Max grabs the mic, getting too big for his britches, <laughs> and calls out and says, "We challenge Zeus." And uh, so yeah. Yeah. So they continue to be the winners, but there is a scene where Ricky, the guy from the beginning that was running that bull show, comes to collect his money. Mm-hmm. He is basically there to jump Charlie and they fucking steal the money from the kid, which I was like, that's insane. And they beat the kid up too. Yeah, it's like, that's a child. What are you doing? And so then at that point, Charlie realizes that he's not good for Max and like Mm -hmm. wants Max to go to his aunt and he doesn't even ask for the other 50,000 because, you know, he's changed. He loves his son and he just wants to be with his son. Um, But all of this to say, I actually think it's sad at this point, Max doesn't get to pick where he lives. Because he should legally be old enough to decide that. I don't know how old he was. 12? I think you only have to be 12. I don't know. I'm not... I don't know. I don't know either. But I just think that that part is sad because he clearly wants to live with Charlie. Well, I just thought it was nice that Charlie finally saw that he's not good for him. And it's because of the lifestyle that he's lived Mm -hmm. all this time. It's dangerous. But they do end up reuniting when Charlie kind of has a change of heart and he reaches out to the aunt and the fucking uncle and is like, can we do this fight? Like, just this one night, we're going to fight Zeus. And they let it happen and the aunt and uncle also go to the fight. Everybody seems to go to the fight. I think the apology scene there of Charlie at the door talking to them was bad. Yeah. I think that it was cringy. (laughs) The way that they had him, like, kind of do this train of thought thing where he's like, it was so dangerous. And Max is like, it was dangerous. She almost got me killed. And Charlie's like, I know. And, like, the aunt is standing there like, what? Like, it just wasn't funny. It didn't hit. Like, but I think it took away from the movie. Like, there's parts of this movie where I'm like, this could have been a little more dramatic. I think it should have been. I mean, I mentioned, too, I mean, you know, we're not quite done with the movie, but they never really get too far into Charlie's history as a boxer, which I think would have been a compelling storyline of, like, how he didn't want to give up boxing, and he kind of ended up in this lifestyle because he had nothing. Boxing was all he knew, and then it came time for the robots, and boxers were just tossed out, and he kind of did what he had to to survive. I think that would have made it more dramatic, would have made him a better character, like someone you would have not thought was such a shithead. And I feel like that was there, but they didn't touch on it. Like, I don't know if those scenes maybe got cut or they just thought you'd pick it up along the way. Yeah. But I, they make like small odes to it. And they especially do that in the final fight when they have to turn on the shadow function. But yeah. before we get to that, the dude, Ricky, right? 
Ricky from the beginning comes up and bets on Zeus, Mm -hmm. bets that like a hundred thousand dollars that Adam won't make it out of the second, first or second round. And I'm just going to say the way he said homeboy and his accent did not age well. (laughs) It was so terrible. I was actively uncomfortable. Um, but he gets his in the end, you know? Yeah. Because he tries to escape, and Anthony Mackie's like, nah, bro, you owe me money. I liked that. That was I was l- glad that he kind of got his comeuppance there, because he was a dick. Even though yeah. Charlie owed him money, he still was an animal about it. So, anyway, they do have that fight against Zeus. Uh, Adam's shit starts breaking, and so they, they have to use the shadow function. So, Charlie takes over using his knowledge of boxing, and he does the shadow function. They end up beating Zeus. They don't beat Zeus. They lose. And then major decision. He knocks Zeus okay. down, but they do. They I do think lose. they beat Zeus, but yeah, they because they just both lasted all the rounds. The score goes to fucking Zeus, Zeus which is bullshit. They definitely won, and also they said like you know no robot would last so many rounds with Zeus, and I think that the fact that they lasted is just like shows that Zeus ain't all that anyway. Yeah, he said that Zeus Zeus may retain his rights as world champion. But Adam is the people's champion. Yeah, it's fucking nonsense, and, but I uh, understand, I guess. You know, not Charlie, but Max is like, that sounds great to me. And then Charlie's trying to tell Max he loves him, and he's like, I know, don't say it. Boo. Hug, movie <laughs> end. So when this movie, Hugh Jackman first got the script for this movie, he read it to his son as a bedtime story, and his son apparently was so captivated by the story that Hugh Jackman was like, well, I have to take this role. I thought that was super cute. Mm-hmm. This movie overall, like I said, there's stuff in it that I think should have happened that didn't. I don't think it's a bad movie, but I rated it a 3.5 because of the lack of, I think, drama and backstory for Charlie that I think would have knocked this movie up a couple of notches maybe. I put it at a 3.2 for the same reason. I just think it wasn't, it was too segmental for for me but i liked the movie it was good it was entertaining i just like yeah when i'm thinking about it i'm like you know and not every movie has to be like that but no definitely it just not. there was some things that there was no context for and so you were confused yeah would have been better as like a series i think i could see that yeah you wrote a series as your sequel didn't you i guess you'll have to find out in a minute <laughs> okay so for the game we're just gonna do a classic who would win oh man these are all gonna be Adam versus these other robots. Okay. So Adam versus Chappie. Adam. You think so? Yeah. Chappie's pretty quick. Chappie is pretty quick, but Adam can take a hit, and if he has a shadow function on, I, yeah. <laughs> I think Chappie's Adam. is a lot smaller, but he's also nicer. I don't think he'd want to fight, so he'd just I die. I don't think he'd want to fight either, and neither would Adam, if we're being honest. I think they'd just be friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just hug, and then they'll fight Hugh... <laughs> huge jacked man in Chappie's movie since he's evil. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. What about Sonny for My Robot versus... Sonny wasn't a fighter either. I know, but he could crawl Probably like... Sonny. Probably Sonny. Just because I think, smarter. I think... I think he was smarter. He could dream and he could just crawl up on him and like rip his cords yeah. out or you I know, whatever. So. I yeah, think so. I think Sonny would win. Optimus Prime? Optimus Prime. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't even like... <laughs> Stop. Optimus Prime He's would huge. just take his big toe that's not there and just like yeah. step and he would be dead. <laughs> the Terminator? I think the Terminator. Which one? Um, Arnold. Arnold? Yeah. yeah. Arnold Arnold has guns. If it's fist to fist fighting, not Arnold. But if Arnold has like weapons and stuff, like I guess you're right. Yeah, if it's fists If then... it's like a true boxing match, uh Adam's got it all day. Honestly, yeah, if it's a true boxing match, I think he's got all these people. Like if they have to box him. I don't think Sonny. Well Sonny can't crawl on him uh, if it's boxing, that's, you that's know the rules. True. That's true. But, you know, we can't. This has... not Optimus Prime. He can't box really. He's too big. I mean he could. He just <laughs> Okay. Uppercut one and done. And then what about Megan from the hit movie Mithrigan. I mean, she's got that dance. No, Adam. You, know? you can see it in the club. I'll be acting real nice. She also can run on all fours very fast. Boxing? Oh, boy. In boxing, we agree that they would win, or he would win regardless. If but everybody n- except Optimus Prime. Not, you think if it was just Megan versus him, he would win to that too? Yeah. I think. Two regular humans beat Megan, <laughs> Mithrigan. <laughs> And 
you have Charlie and Max. They're okay. not going to let anything happen. Don't argue with me. I'm correct. I'm not I'm not dying on any hills for this story, but all right. Um. That was the game. <laughs> so, Sean Levy, the director, is interested in making a sequel to this movie with Ryan Reynolds and huge jacked man. So... As Ryan Reynolds as his son? I have no idea who Ryan Reynolds would play. Probably not his son. I know his son, the uh, man that played his son, doesn't act anymore, I believe you told me, but... I'm not sure that that's the route they're going for. I mean, Ron Rollins looks good for his age, but he don't look that good. Mm-mm. <laughs> okay. He is like 20 years younger, though. I know. So. I don't know. It's not out, okay? It's not okay. out. Okay, well, what's your sequel? So my sequel is called Real Steel, The World's Next Great Boxer. It's uh, some years have passed since Adam almost beat Zeus, and he went on to be a champion fighting robot and evolved the sport due to his unique shadow function ability. Max is about to go off to college and his dad will retire as a boxer and Adam is going to be retired as well. You know, they've all connected over the years. They're approached by a boxing executive about filming a reality TV show to find the next great big robot boxer to replace him. So Max and Charlie agree. They, it's going to show all of like what goes into filming a reality show behind the scenes, the script that like you don't typically see. And then eventually Max figures out that the executive behind the show is none other than Tak Mashido, and he is doing the show in an attempt to steal Adam's shadow um, function as he has paid a world champion boxer to be able to use it and win with his robots. Hmm. Because his robots have started losing, you know, and Adam had the unique ability to yeah. sh- of shadow function. So, unfortunately, he does steal it, and on the finale of their show, after winning, Talk comes out, reveals himself, and challenges Adam to a fight. Charlie does not want to fight, but Max wants Adam to be unique in his shadow function, and is mad the only reason for the show was the attempt of stealing it. They accept the challenge, and if Adam wins, they get the shadow function back, but if Talk wins, then he gets Adam. Leading up to the fight, Charlie is terrified to disappoint his son by losing um, by losing the fight and causing Char- or Max to lose his friend in Adam. He's contemplating faking an injury until Bailey gives him the pep talk he needs after a long and grueling fight. Charlie wins and they get the shadow function back. They agree to no more TV. Adam officially retires and Charlie sees Max off to college. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Hmm. Not as good as mine but not too shabby. Real Steel 2. Adam has been the top fighting robot champion in the world for years. As Adam finishes another season as the champ, Max has been talking about allowing Adam to retire, but Charlie has been against the idea. Meanwhile, a new company known as Morph Inc. has begun buying out all the robot fighting leagues it can and has begun making a name for itself as the top robot fighting league. Adam, of course, receives an invitation to compete in Morph's robot league and Charlie and Max think nothing of it and go to give the people a show. Upon arriving, Morph CEO Stephen Morph, played by Ryan Reynolds, comes to personally greet Team Adam. Stephen tells them how big of a fan he is and wishes them luck. Charlie, Max, and Adam annihilate the competition and win the first ever Morph League season. Stephen comes out to congratulate them, invite them to an after party, and during the after party, Adam is left with the rest of the bots as they are not allowed inside. Max protests this, but Charlie assures him it's fine. While Max and Charlie are distracted, we see a scene of the garage with all the robots, and there's a robot that walks up to Adam and just sits in front of him, staring at him. The party ends, and we get a time jump to the new season. Team Adam is considering whether or not they will be competing this season when they see an announcement from Morph Inc. introducing their new robot. They're claiming that this robot will be the champion of this season, Max and Charlie notice the new robot called Particle looks and fights exactly like Adam. The group goes to see the CEO they had met, Steven, about the new robot, and things quickly turn sour. Steven claims they have no proof of any wrongdoing and accuses them of being jealous and worried that their bot won't be the top dog anymore. Charlie and Max leave, and as Charlie starts strategizing on how to beat Particle, Max interrupts him, saying that Adam will be announcing his retirement tomorrow. Max and Charlie get into an argument as we see that Charlie truly has viewed Adam as simply a money-making tool all these years, and Max has seen him as family. That night, Charlie and Max separately watch Particle's first fight of the season and witness Particle tear a robot in half and toss him into the crowd, injuring several fans. The mistake looks to be the fault of Steven Morph, who is piloting the robot himself with no prior fighting experience and is overly excited about each win. The next day, during the scheduled announcement for Adam's retirement, Max instead announces that they will be taking on Particle. Charlie apologizes to Max and says that he wants to help, 
and as they are training, they begin to fear their old moves are all played out and Adam will lose. When they are considering giving up, <laughs> Charlie's old friend, Amara Creed, shows up with a score to settle against Stephen Morph. Oh my god. That's right, it's a Creed crossover movie. <laughs> <laughs> she has a score to settle because she helped design a robot for the company, and they trashed it and fired her and never told her why. So... With her knowledge from the company and some of her own moves that she learned from her dad, Team Adam is ready to fight. During the fight, we see Particle transform as he begins to lose the fight and is revealed to us that Particle is a robot designed to physically copy the shape as well as the fighting style of other robots. And the reason Morph Inc. has been buying out robot leagues and employees designs is to feed them all to Particle. Particle is frantically changing its parts into robots from the past as Adam wins with a special move from Amara. Steven Morph is in a rage and promises to win the rematch. Charlie tells Steven there will be no rematch as Team Adam is retired. Mm. That's the end. Nice. <laughs> Seems like there should be another one after that. Could be. Yeah. Creed crossover. It's Creed 4. That's the next oh, one God. after that. <laughs> <laughs> you're stupid or maybe rocky 20 it could be rocky 20 but you know they don't want sylvester in the movies no oh, more even though he wrote them all oh well <laughs> anyway thank you for making it this far if you would like to vote on whose sequel idea was the best come by our youtube channel for the polls <laughs> or let us know your idea with a comment tweet or you can reach us at needless at gmail.com links as always will be wherever you are listening if you had a good time, share a show with someone, leave us a review, and come back for more. We would love to have you. All right, be easy, everyone. We will see you next week. Bye.